Please welcome to the stage, Michael Wiggy. Thank you. Hello, good morning, good morning. So today you're going to learn how to travel the world for free. And if you're going to do that, you might going to meet the most amazing people. Check it out. So what's the biggest problem with having no, no money? <laughs> what's the biggest problem? Is it having no money? Is that the biggest problem? That is the biggest problem. Well, you have to do other things. What was, your first, what was your first problem? Okay, okay. I mean, I mean, there were a lot of problems. So many people ask me, what did you get out of the trip around the world without any money? I mean, come on, I met Katy Perry. Yeah, nothing better than that. So who of you could have already inspired to travel the world? Okay. Who could have already inspired to travel the world for free and not spend any money? That sounds good. I think I'm going to help you today. So this is actually how I've done that trip from Europe to Antarctica and yeah, in between I met Katy Perry like luckily and that, that was the trip. A 30 to 35,000 kilometer journey from Berlin to Antarctica will be anything but a walk in the park without a penny in his pocket. The journey will take him across the Atlantic to Canada and on to the USA, hopefully taking in the Grand Canyon through Central America and eventually through Colombia and finally down along South America. After traveling through at least 10 countries and practically all climates the planet has to offer, it will somehow find a way across the Drake Passage to Antarctica. So, if you want to travel the world for free, first of all, you need to figure out how to get food for free. So, here one example. I was in Belgium and I saw this muffin in the bakery. So I asked the lady in the bakery, what do I have to do to get the muffin for free? And she said, tell me a joke. If the joke is good, you get the muffin for free. I told the joke, the joke wasn't really good, but I still got the muffin. So, the barter system. This is all about the barter system. Check this out. Vegas. Yeah, those three in the Starbucks said, okay, if you're gonna do a handstand in front of the counter, you're gonna get a banana, a coffee, and a sandwich for free. I did the handstand, kind of like two seconds, and I got food and drink for free, and all the other customers recognized what was going on there. So other people joined, offered me another trade. One guy called his brother, hey, you know, this guy can stay at your house tonight, and so on, and so on. If you're gonna do this in public, fun trades, I mean, it's gonna be easy. I'm not kidding, it's gonna be really, really easy. So, what's going on here? I was in Buenos Aires, Argentina and my Spanish is not really good, so some of the trades didn't really work out. You know, people couldn't understand me that much. So I got the Cookie Monster out. So if the Cookie Monster is asking for some barter deals, much easier. Believe me, if the Cookie Monster wants to trade, everyone gives the Cookie Monster something. So that's a solution. If you're stuck in the world, get the Cookie Monster out for sure. So here, this is in Hawaii, Big Island. Big Island has like vast jungle, tropical regions. So, I, you know, I, I was born in a big city in Europe, so I don't really know, you know, what can I eat if, if I enter a rainforest. So I talked to the locals in Hawaii, and they taught me what's edible. And believe me, if you learn what's edible in a rainforest, it's gonna be a lot. You know, it, obviously there are fruits and vegetables and even flowers. You see, I'm eating a flower here, and 30 of these flowers might taste like flour, but it's like a meal. You know? So, there we go. So, if you ever travel for free, and it's gonna be your birthday, be in Peru, because in Peru, yeah, anyone from Peru? Okay, there we go, there we go. Because in many restaurants in Peru, they have a tradition that if, it's, if you have birthday, you get some food for free and an awesome party. Done. Yeah, food and great party in Peru. So if you want to learn how to barter, check out moneytreasures.com how to barter. Free, free food from any kind of resort, just check out freegan.info. You're going to learn a lot how to do this and where to get food for free. It's really less difficult than you would expect. How do you get accommodation for free if you travel around the world? Always bring your tent, number one, very important. And there are many free campsites around the US 
And some of them have the most amazing view. Check this out. You leave the tent and go and get Chris. I mean, how can that be better? Does any of you know couchsurfing.org? Yeah, so quite a few already know that. So it's a social media like Facebook, but it's, it's designed to sleep at other people's houses for free. So more than five million members, and you know, you just have a profile, and you write to other people and say, hey, I'm in Montreal, can I stay at your house for free? And it, it won't take more than 30 minutes to, to get the, the first answer, and you're gonna stay for free and meet the most amazing people. Couchsurfing.org. All you need to bring is your computer or your smartphone, you log into Wi-Fi for free in many places, cafes, hotels, restaurants, and then you're gonna use Couchsurfing.org. I slept at more than 80 houses all around the world for free, and I met really, really cool people, like Alexandra from Buenos Aires, Couchsurfing. Murph, I stayed in San Francisco with Murph for like a week. Awesome guy, you know, stayed on, on his sofa for free. So, Couchsurfing.org, you have to check it out. It's really, for me, the best thing I learned from, from the internet my entire life. Free campsites, .net, sure, you're gonna check out where are the free campsites in the United States. Okay, how do you travel for free? That's most important, huh? to go from one place to another for free. So, sometimes you can hitchhike, you know, I like hitchhiking, but you know, there are safety issues in some states, in the US it's legal, in others it's not legal, so think about it if that's really your thing. But here's a great example, I hitchhike, and this guy gives me a ride in his horse buggy, and he tells me he's like an Amish farmer, and, and the Amish farmers in Ohio and Pennsylvania live without any technology. They live like in the 19th century. So he said, okay, come on, I show you my house, you're gonna stay in my house as well for a couple of days. So I had this incredible insight in a different subculture. Okay, what's going on here? I was in Vegas and I offered the service of the human sofa. Why? People, you know, many tourists in Vegas, it's hot, people are sweating, and there are not many benches to rest. So, I offered the service of the human sofa for a dollar, people could rest for a minute and chip in a dollar. Huh? So, I've done this for half an hour and I had enough money to pay a bus ticket from Vegas to LA. And I'm sure you guys, you would have much better ideas than I have. You're probably much more creative. You know, any kind of idea, like on the sidewalk, helps and people like to chip in a dollar if the, if the idea is fun. Check this out. Pillow fighting in San Francisco. Huh? One dollar to pillow fight me. Ten minutes later, everyone was lining up to pillow fight. Huh? So that's it. People needed a pillow fight in San Francisco. I've done this for an entire week and check this out. So $300, huh? I could buy a plane ticket uh, to Costa Rica, $300 through pillow fighting. So I also crossed the Atlantic on a cargo ship. This is something really, it, it's a great experience, but you have to plan ahead. Yeah? You cannot just jump on a cargo ship, you have to call them before, uh, uh, write letters, emails and so on. It is, it is a bit time consuming. But it's worth it. I, I traveled across the Atlantic 11 days on a container ship for free, just working on that ship. So, many information. It's wiki.org if you feel like hitchhiking. Cruiseseekers.net, uh, boats can carry hitchhikers too. So you can hitchhike on a sailboat. And rideshare.org for any kind of rideshare in the US. So, how do you get sightseeing for free? And believe me, this is, this is really easy. So for example, I was, hitchhiking along Route 66. Yeah? A, guy, a guy gave me a ride, and he had one of these yearly national park passes. And these passes are not just good for a person, they're good for an entire car. So if you're in the car with that person with a national park ticket, you get it for free. And that's how I could see the Grand Canyon for free. So back in Peru, I wanted to see the Inca town of Machu Picchu, famous Inca site, and you usually go there like, like in a guided tour, 40 miles, you know, like across the Andes, 12,000 feet elevation, and it costs money to do that. So I didn't have the money, so I offered my service as a pet carrier, you know, to 
to carry the luggage of the tourist, started really good, but then I must admit, it, it was too much for me. It, it was like a li little bit too much, and so this was kind of the outcome of the trip. And over 4,000 meters said there is nowhere. I can't breathe. I wish I would have never done that. Yeah, that can happen. So always think about your, your limits, you know? If you're somewhere in the world, you want to be safe, you want to be healthy, you know, it's something like this, this, you know, it worked out in the end, but obviously safety is very, very important. So, many sites online, 53 things around the world, just go on telegraph.co.uk, free attractions in London, free things to do in Los Angeles, just Google free attractions, and it's like all over the world, yeah? if you just look for it. So, Safety and health is very important. I always carry a phone with me, emergency phone, you know. If you, if you travel the world, you know, maybe your parents want, want to contact you or whatever, always be available. This is what I can really advise you for safety. And I also always carry an international health insurance, you know, in case of emergency, whatever can happen, it's very good to be covered for sure. And believe me, traveling the world for free you know, it's the most amazing thing I've ever done in my life. I met incredible people, more than a hundred people helped me to travel for free to Antarctica. And believe me, the world is a much better place than the media or the news tell us on a daily basis. I mean, I've had the greatest experience all over the world. And even like countries and cultures are different, we are much more alike all over the world than different. And that's what I learned by traveling around the world and finally made it without any money to Antarctica. I've reached Antarctica. Yes, I finally made it. I can't believe it. It happened. The few fact of this trip. I crossed 11 countries. I had 40 different places to sleep. I asked more than 500 times for food in shops and restaurants. I traveled 35,000 Ks within 150 days. And over 100 people, very nice and generous people, helped me on this trip. And I'm really happy to have had the great chance to have met these very, very, very nice people. <laughs> that can happen. Huh? You do, if, if you travel for free and then you end up in Antarctica, it's pretty cold for sure. Huh? So, for me it was a great trip. I hope I could inspire you to travel as well or to travel on a budget or for free. If you feel like you know, going abroad even longer for a study program or a work program, that's possible as well. It's a great opportunity to get to know other cultures, like the roofing, worldwide opportunities on organic farms is awesome, and different study programs abroad. You, you probably know some. It's a great chance to get to know the world. So, thank you very much for listening, and hope to see you later uh, at the Kirkland booth. And yeah, hopefully we're going to talk more about traveling the world for free. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs>